McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Welcome to episode number 15 of this NHL 21 Custom League Draft to Glory franchise mode here on my channel. If you guys have missed any episodes up to this point, go up into that top corner of the video right now. There will be a card with a link to the playlist. Also, don't forget to drop a like on the video if you do enjoy. It really helps out the channel and the video and only takes a second. And if you have been watching my videos for a while and haven't yet, YouTube's telling me 70% of you guys aren't subscribed. So please go down below, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate that as well. And uh, we're just over 1,200 subscribers at this point. We're trying to hit 1,300, so let's get to that goal as soon as possible. Anyways, guys, last episode we got through, you know, the entire offseason, got our team set up, and, you know, commentated a game. Casper has put up two points in his rookie debut, which is absolutely fantastic when you go in and look at him. Goal and an assist to start off. I mean, he hasn't played a game in the NHL yet, or he's played one game in the NHL at the CPHA. That's what we're calling it. And at 20 years old, you know, he's projecting to be a really, really good rookie. So anyways, um, we're going to get into a season sim, do half and half, and then hopefully things go well enough that the Comets actually make the playoffs this year. They should. I mean, they have um, in three out of the last four and six out of the last eight. So I mean, they should be in the playoffs. Hopefully we can get past round one this year. But again, you know, knock on wood, right? Knock on my desk. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into the simulation here. Uh, not too much yet with the draft class, but I will, you know, kind of go into more detail with that as we get further through. Um, the only guy that I'm really keeping an eye on that looks super interesting is right down here at pick number 24, Marco Nermi, uh, pension cycle supposedly, uh, pension cycle defenseman, NHL ready uh, finish, but you know, he might be the guy to go with for this upcoming draft here. Anyways, uh, that's all going to be, you know, relative to how well the team does. But anyways, let's get through the 2031 slash 32 simulation here. And I will be back with you guys when we hit that halfway mark, 41 games for the team. All right, guys. So at the 41 game mark, the comments are 29, 11, and one. They've won 10 in a row, if not more. That's insane. They are having such a good year. Okay. That's five, six. Back to the uh, Stampeders. Seven, eight. That's 11. Okay, so they won 11 in a row heading into the halfway point of the season. Jason K has 72 points. And 59 points is tied for second place in the league with the Canucks. That's pretty crazy. Okay. 72 points is insane too, but uh, yeah, the Comets are, oh no, the Comets are second, I mean they're tied for, no, they have more wins, yeah, regulation wins, or regulation plus overtime wins, they have the most in the league, okay, so that's insane, um, Jason k has got 72 points, 30 goals, 42 assists, 30 goals in 41 games is pretty good, I would say, I mean, <laughs> oh, Sergei Kasparaitis is over a point per game too. Guy Valcourt has 27 goals this year. Eric Sider, not, I mean, still having a pretty Eric Sider type year, but man, like what is going on? Um, yeah, wow. Um, interesting numbers here getting put up. Uh, Jimmy Denny might get shipped off by the end of this season, but man, the K brothers are just like Charlie Kay's got 818. Jason's got 817. <laughs> God, they're right there with each other. Um let's look at the whole league at the halfway point. And it's Jason K first overall. Let's go. I mean Jeremy Simons is having a banger of a year again. He scored 732 goals in 982 games or 932 games, sorry. And he has been close a couple times to a point per year, or goal per game pace, which is insane. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he catches up pretty quick. He's only two points behind, but the K brothers are both in the top five in league scoring this year, which is crazy when we look at all defensemen. Um, <laughs> Sergey Kasparaitis leads it. So that's scary. 
um, that a rookie defenseman is leading everybody. Um, for goalies, two, three, four. Okay, so Whiting's in the top five. Oh, I backed out. No, I backed out. I didn't get to see rookies. But I would assume Kasparite is, considering he's leading all defensemen, I would assume he's probably up there for rookies too. Um, so for all rookies, <laughs> yep, yep. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what we like to see. I mean, Beauregard and Varlamov were drafted one and two this previous year, but two years before that, Kasparitis was drafted, and he's going off. I mean, to be fair, Andre Varlamov looks like a sick pick for the Lumberjacks there as well. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see, right? But Jason K leading the way. The Comets in second place with you know very much um a contra or a very big contribution from the k brothers this year but same with casper as he's just contributing crazy good offensively so anyways we're gonna sim to the end of the season now and yeah this is looking like it's gonna be an exciting year for the comets so guys um as you're seeing here 57 22 and 3 jason k my guy we knew they were capable of it but damn montreal as well 62 wins that's pretty insane um so yeah the comets don't even win the division with 117 points for their record but they finished top three in the league oh man and i mean you look at the pacific and it's like three teams bang 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 just insane edmonton finishes with a atrocious 52 points um uh, montreal wins the league with 127 points Ooh, hamilton halifax and edmonton were all just oh they were just miserable that's too bad lesbridge and saskatoon in the top five as well but man what a year it was for the comets 71 percent of the points our best record ever i mean this was one of our best teams on paper uh when you look at it and jason k proves us pr proves that statement to be true the k brothers proved that statement to be true with 130 each wow what a year for those guys i mean eric Sider only put up 73 points on that line but who cares how about this storyline, guys? Sergei Kasparaitis puts up a point per game as a rookie. That's insane. So now here's the question. Did the K brothers win the scoring race? They did not. Oh, they were so close. They were both top five. Um, but Gost had breaks the 130-point record. Poso breaks the 130-point record. And this Christian Blomstrand also breaks the 130-point record. So that's insane. Um yeah six guys with you know approximately 130 points each um jason k's 60 goals puts him 10th in the league that's pretty stupid but okay um Bolesky, wow he was putting box away like crazy oh my god jeremy simon's 86 goals are you serious 99 assists for Timoshov. that's crazy too so yeah uh k brothers both top five don't even win the scoring race so that's annoying but it is what it is 81 points for sergey kasparitis leads all defensemen he's gonna win the he's gonna win the norris and kim whiting finishes second with 45 wins this season that's insane kim whiting let's go my guy and rookie skaters sergey kasparitis again I'm glad we waited to play him in the NHL. I'm glad we sat and grew him because he's going to win a Norris and a Calder in one year. That's crazy. Um, so, yeah. Wow, the K brothers tie at 130 each. Never seen that before. So, guys, that this season sees two Comets players blow the scoring record out of the water by 23 points in a season it was 107 before this year um we also see the wins record get broken by no 11 wins we had 46 was our max we did 46 in four 
separate years. Never could break 46. We go for 53 wins this year with the Comets. That's, or sorry, 57 wins this year with the Comets. So 11 extra wins and 16 extra points this season compared to the last year, which was 101, which was the record breaker. So yeah, that was a fantastic year. Um, no question about it. And yeah, the K brothers really show off what they're capable of. We get the Victoria Vipers first round. It is official. Victoria is that team that we have to get past to prove that we are actually a good team. We've had to play the Vipers twice before in the playoffs in round one. We've lost both times in four or five games. They have never struggled with us. I mean, for pretty obvious reasons, they're uh, they're a pretty solid team, I would say. You know, just just a solid team. Nothing crazy here. Just like the best, one of the best players in the entire league here. Nine hundred ninety-two points in eight hundred eighty-four games. That's crazy. Um, and they have defense, which is scary. Um, so yeah, that is that is the team we are dealing with at the moment and oh we gotta beat them this year we can't not beat them like we we need to show the victoria vipers who's boss here we have home ice advantage that has never happened in a playoff series before for the comets so hopefully third place makes a big difference but yeah um <laughs> We'll see. We'll see what the comments can get done here coming up, but this is going to be a fun one either way. I mean, you look at our comments team here, and it's like, yes, this team is for real. They are legit. They are going to be insane. Or they're, they're going to, you know, put up some points and put up a fight. And the defense is there this year, which I can't say has been the case in previous seasons. The chemistry boost helps so, so much, too. That's technically a 92 overall Sergei Kasparitis. <sighs> Man, he should be he should be having a good good season here. So, I mean, that was his Burnaby stats from last year. Um, Kasparitis didn't do much last year, so hopefully he can improve. Kim Whiting won 3 out of 7 last year in the playoffs. So... Yeah, we'll see if he's the right goalie or not. I mean, Tristan Weinrich technically won. Did he technically win that playoff series? No, that was 25-26. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It was even in goal. Oh, it was it was Georgiev. That makes sense. So we'll see if it's the goaltending or not this year, but um, it shouldn't be. Kim Whiting literally put up 46 wins, or 47 wins, so or maybe 45. But anyways, um, <laughs> let's get to this series. This should be a fun one. I didn't show you guys um, the AHL, but we had some serious growth there too. Uh, they go 45, 26, and 11, and lots of bigger scorers here. 44 goals for Marion Mikas. He should honestly be playing in our NHL team, and he's not uh, because that's how stacked our system is right now. So, yeah, that, that's uh, that's what we're dealing with here, but not a problem. That is not a problem a team has, is having too much depth. Like, that shouldn't be a problem. I mean, it is slightly an issue, but, I mean, they're 100 and how many points was it? 101 points puts them eighth in the league. Okay, so Burnaby should be all right. They're taking on Utica, but anyways, um, we're not focused on that. We are going to go game by game here and hopefully get through some actual playoff action. So game one against the Vipers sees Kim Whiting get injured. Are you serious right now? This is a joke. This is an absolute freaking joke. We're sending it. Isaiah McMuffin is going to be playing in net. I'm not even going to give Weinrich the opportunity. He hasn't. I think he might have won one or two games. That's it. 
He is what's his playoff track record? Zero wins in six games. Um, so we're not doing that. So yeah, Isaiah McMuffin will get the start here. Oh, that's scary. Okay, did we at least win? Yeah, we did. Okay, <sighs> frick. That's that's not not what I wanted, but okay, cool, whatever. Yay. Yay, injured goalies. Yay. Oh, wrecking my rosters. I mean, honestly, this team is good enough they should still win, but yeah, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen here? So anyways, the Vipers win 4-3 in game one. Jason K with two goals and an assist. That's a good start. That's a good start because that means we've gotten one out of four. And we've never gotten more than one on Victoria before. So anyways, great start. Let's see what happens here. If Isaiah McMuffin can hold his own or if he's just going to lose brutally. Let's see. Game number two, 5-4 shootout loss. Okay. See, that one stings because he's right there. Like, McMuffin is right there to putting up a great, great win. But he doesn't quite. It goes in the shootout. And that's goalie experience. But... The Vipers don't have an insane goalie. Like, Di Pietro's like 82 rated, I think. Jason K still gets a goal in that game. Or no, he gets two goals in that game. No, he gets one goal in that game, sorry. But, ah, uh, did McMuffin at least do well? Like, I know he lost the game. But, like, we were right there. It was a one-goal game. Oh, we had a point. <sighs> ah. Did he play a playoff game? Yeah, he did. And he lost it, technically. What? How does that work? There's, there's some glitches going on in the stats. But anyways, 1-1 one, one series here. Let, let's turn it around. Let's, uh, let's get something done here in Victoria. Game number three. Sees Kim Whiting come back. Thank goodness. Okay. So, that means we go like this. We go send him down. I know I'm sorry, Isaiah. I didn't want to have to do that, but we kind of have to at this point. So, Whiting is not going to play until he's healthy. Which is just my rule. That's just how I deal with goalies. Um... McMuffin, on the other hand, needs to just win this series in the AHL because I don't know how that went. 5 2, man. Weinrich can't win a game. It's bad. So we're down 2 1 in both series here. Not spectacular. All right, heading into game four. Man, we can't drop this one. We have to win. And Kim Wyden is technically healthy. So we'll see if a technically healthy Kim Whiting gets the win here and he does 5 to 1 win okay we have a 2-2 series on our hands Isaiah McMuffin did not get it done though that's not great okay anyways um hopefully they can turn it around in the AHL game number 5 this is going to decide the series in my opinion but here we go and it's a win for the Comets let's go Jason K 6 goals in 5 games that's good to see, and the bolts get eliminated immediately. Not good. Anyways, the Comets have the opportunity to advance to round two for the first time in six seasons. Will they be able to do it? We'll see in the slow sim here. So, first period, it's a one nothing game as Patrick Line opens the scoring in 9-9 in shots after the first. Second period, 2-1, let's go. Jason K and Matty Harakala both getting goals just over a minute apart. 25-17 to 17 in shots for the Comets heading into this third period. Oh, what's going to happen here? Power play for the Vipers doesn't convert. Another power play for the Vipers does convert. Oh, Kuka scored. Oh, my gosh. Oh, what is going to happen? You're kidding me. Boca scores. 
Oh my god, we're going to game 7. Are you serious? Are you serious right now? We're going to 7 games? It shouldn't be that way. But it is. Oh man. Oh man, oh man, oh man. So here we go guys. Game 7. This decides it here if the Comets are going to be a any what or any bit successful franchise or if they're going to be a total failure of a team that just never gets anywhere so here we go game seven in the slow sim what's going to happen first period one one jason k and patrick line a the two most bona fide goal scorers in this series i mean apart from jackson Ocposo getting goals 19 to 8 for victorian shots not spectacular second period colonna Kelowna, it is a 3-1 game. Matty Harakali, Guy Valcourt, guys who we know can put the puck in the net, do so. We're going to jump in and watch. We're going to jump in and coach the team here. Are they going to be able to get it done? I mean, they should be able to, but you never know. I almost want to toss on the alternates instead, but no, that is for Stanley Cup Finals only. So yeah. Let's see. Can the Comets get it done here? I, this is a very evenly matched series. So it should be a fun one to commentate here. Let's get into the third period. Now Teixeira walking in. He's bumped off the puck. The puck is passed around. Valcourt skating back into his own end. Centers it. That is turned over and there's a shot but it goes wide. Now Valcourt in the battle. Turns it over but Thibault is going to get there first. Bernard Thibault sends it up. It can be ended here. Shot is blocked by Fleischmann. 25 seconds left. It's turned over and given away again. Now Ocposo looking to get the puck in deep. He can't do it. Horinsky sends it up to Teixeira. Teixeira breaks in. Pass over to Wenberg. Centering pass. They score! 13 seconds left and it is a 3-2 game. So not much time remaining here. But this game is not over yet as Oli Kuka gets his second of the game. I believe, or no, second of the series for sure. Actually, it's fourth of the series, but uh, he has been a good player for the Vipers here in the playoffs, but probably too little too late as the faceoff goes to the Comets. And this is going to get not played in by Christensen as he's pinned up, but seven seconds left. Not much time. Jones over to Wenberg. Wenberg walking in, pass in front. That's a great chance. And there it is. The Comets finally move on to round two of the playoffs after beating their number one nemesis, the Victoria Vipers, in a seven game series. What a playoffs series it was. And we see the Comets finally move on to round two for the first time in six years. But man, that was a good, good series. And the Comets were sitting back all game. They got a couple early goals and that's all they needed they finish it off finally I would make a bet that your first start of the game would be Kim Wyden that would be my assumption and yeah Kim Wyden 35 saves what a night for the guy so the Nailers get through as well as the Prince Albert Prowlers for the West obviously Vancouver beat Abbotsford in the east, we see Toronto move through, um, Kingston, Montreal, and Shakutami beats out Gatineau. So an interesting couple series there, and who will the Comets play next? It looks like it's going to be Vancouver. So the one team in the east, or in the west, sorry, that was better than the Comets will take on the Comets in round two. Should be a fun one, but we'll see what happens here. And yeah, Vancouver, they got a good team. Don't get me wrong. Nicolishin's a great player. Matches up really nicely with Besser and a couple of these other players. And I mean, Hughes, Boquist, like Torres. Torres especially, man. Torres is a nice goalie. 14th overall pick by the Canucks. 
Like, you don't get a much better goalie than that. I mean, they match up pretty well. I But then again, I think our Comets team matches up even better to them. So yeah, this should be a fun one uh, coming up here, but who knows which way this series is going to go with the Canucks. They are technically the better team. Why did Casper... Apparently, Casparitis just dropped right off to an 85 again. That makes no sense. But okay, um, it is what it is, I guess. That's a strange one. That's a really weird one. I don't know what happened there. Okay, anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, that was weird. But yeah, Kim Whiting, definitely the reason why the team moved on. Um, nobody else could take sole responsibility except for him probably so yeah yeah that was a that was an interesting first series i really want to bring mikas up dump triple balance or dump balance balance block would get us where oh we could put him in for christensen but i just don't know if that's the right play not right now anyways i want to say mikas would fit on the second line but he probably wouldn't so anyways, there are your series, um, Battle of Ontario, Battle of Quebec, and then Battle of BC with the Comets and the Canucks, and then Nanaimo and Prince Albert is a bit of a weird one, but anyways, let's get into this. I don't know how the Comets are going to fare against the Canucks, but it should be an interesting series. I think we personally have the better team, but we'll see. Anyways, game one of the playoffs, or round two, sorry, goes to the Canucks in a 6-3 loss. They really kick the Comets' butts. All right, so, I mean, this is just proving that the better team's probably going to win, but we'll see. Game two is a 5-2 win. Let's go. That is a big win for the Comets on away ice. The only team to be up 2-0 is Montreal. No surprise there. But Shikudami is a really good team too, so I don't see why not. Anyways, game three in Kelowna. Let's see if the Comets can, you know, get another win here and get a foot up on the Canucks. Game three, 4-2 loss. Ouch. The Canucks are shutting us down, which I find surprising. But then again, not really. Quincy Torres is 88 overall. He's a hard goalie to beat and, you know, one of the best in the league. But so is Kim Whiting, so... I don't see why he's allowing four goals in a game. Anyways, game number four. This is essentially a deciding game here, so we'll see what happens. Game four is Joshua Shields getting a strained hamstring and a 4-3 win. Let's go. The Comets are still in it. We got a series tied 2-2 here. Um, the Canadians are tied now with Shikutumi. They lose two in a row. Um... The Maple Leafs are up 3-1 to one on Kingston, and the Prowlers are up 3-1 to one on Nanaimo. So that is interesting. But here we go. Over to game number five. I'd like to say this decides the series, but as we proved, it very much doesn't. So here we go. Game number five is a 1-0 win. And the Comets have the opportunity to move on in six games on home ice. That would be huge if we could beat the Canucks right here. It would show that this team has determination, grit, and playoff mentality. So yeah, here we go. Game number six in Kelowna. Are they going to finish off the Canucks tonight? Or is Vancouver going to come back and steamroll the Comets? First period, it's a one nothing as Vince Dunn opens the scoring under a minute into the period. That hurts. 12-10 to 10 on shots. The Comets playing from behind right off the start. Second period, it's a 2-1 game. Two short-handed goals from Brett Christensen and Guy Valcourt. Oh, that's got a sting. That was on the same penalty kill, too. Whew. That's really got to hurt. Yikes. Okay, so Vancouver kind of chokes it out here. But we're going to jump in and watch because it's game six on home ice. The Comets have the opportunity to make it farther than they ever have in the playoffs before. Is it going to happen? I didn't see the team ratings. 100 offense, 86 defense, 85 goaltending, 97, 86, 87. Okay, so not much of a difference. 
but let's see what happens. Game six, can the Comets win it, or are they gonna allow Vancouver back in this and choke it? Anyways, face off in the offensive end goes to the Canucks. Lindblom breaks out here, and now he gets past one guy. But Zajac is right on Swordief there, and Swordief loses the battle. Now it goes back to Swordief, and the puck is bounced around like crazy. I don't know what's going on. Taylor Shea loses the puck. Now the Canucks cycling it around Lindblom in front, and it's a tie game. And Justin Swordief makes it a two-all game as the Canucks get back in this one. A great cycle, and again... Shea's in no man's land, Zajac doesn't have his guy covered, and Whiting's kind of hung out to dry there. But a great pass in front, and all he had to do was tip it in. You know, if Whiting was three ratings higher, he might have snagged that one. But anyways, 2-2 game. This can go either way. Let's see what happens. Face off goes to the Comets as Zajac wins it. Now it's passed over here. Zajac, or Shea cutting back, now it's passed over to Valcourt, Valcourt up to Harakala, Harakala cuts back, pass in front, shot by Valcourt, just stopped by Torres there. Now the battle goes back and forth, but Horvat picks it up. Now Griffin pressuring the dump in, Taylor Shea picks it up, passes it over to Griffin, Greg Griffin sending it up the boards, Valcourt looking to make a pass. He finds Zajac. Zajac loses the puck at center, but he lays his guy out. Too bad he couldn't grab the puck. Now, Lafreniere turns it over. Valcourt going to get pinned up and loses the battle. Lafreniere picks it up. Pass in front to Debrinket. Debrinket looking to shoot. Shots blocked in front there. Now, pass in front to Debrinket again. Another backhand shot goes wide. Now, the Comet's really under pressure here. Thibault going to lose the battle. Pedersen picks it up over to Lafreniere. Back to Debrinket. He shoots wide, and that's saved, actually, by... Valcourt, earned by Whiting. Now Thibault breaking in. Pass over. Eudes looking to make a play. He sends it back in front over to Valcourt. He's on his backhand. Backhand shot doesn't go through there. By, I guess it was Thorne. Thorne now centering it in front. Shot. Save. Thorne picks it back up again. Jackson Thorne really going to work here as the grinder. Now Valcourt. Pass in front. Great save by Torres. Thorne had an open net to shoot at and couldn't get it done. Now Lafreniere going to work. Almost got by Tebow. Now Lampman dumps it in deep. This is tense. This is tense hockey here. Now Debrinket loses it to Christensen. The pass goes up and Guerrero tries to go through three guys. Can't do it. Now pass to Cahoon. Cahoon over to Wilson. Wilson loses it. Tebow picks it up over to Christensen. Christensen can't get the dump in done. Now Pedersen turns it over and Guerrero goes back up the ice. He can't even get the dump in it either. Now Hughes breaking it through the center ice. Pass over to Wilson. Wilson centering pass to Cahoon. A great save there by Whiting. And now Denny is pinned up against the boards but wins the battle. Jason Kay looking to make a play. He doesn't find a pass. He goes skating up the middle. Sends it up to Sider who loses the puck. Now decision over to Cahoon. Cahoon is hit hard by Jimmy Denny. What a physical play by the offensive defenseman. Now Sider breaking down the wall. He gets by one guy. Eric Sider in all alone. He shoots. He misses the net. Eric Sider couldn't even get a shot on net on the breakaway. And instead Vancouver comes down the other way. Besser walking in gets by one guy. Charlie K picks it off. Now Sider going in one on one loses the puck. Well, that was Harakala, sorry. Now Shaw breaking in. Gets by one guy. Shaw shoots. Save rebound. Besser cannot get it past Whiting with just over three minutes left in the period. So some very tense moments here, but another look at Cahoon's chance here and a great glove save by Whiting. Now, face off in the defensive end goes to the Canucks. Now it's poked away. And Zaitsev goes skating up with it. Zaitsev holds onto the puck, sends it up. Now, Harakala gets by one guy. He's bumped off the puck, and he gets into a battle with Flurry. Harakala walking out in front, jams it in front, and Torres is going to hold on here. So another look here at this. Nope, no other look. So face off here in the defensive end for the Canucks. And they are going to lose the faceoff. Shot from Shea hits his own guy. 
and Lazan breaks out. Now Lindblom walking in, pass in front to Hedl, it's turned over. Griffin breaks out the other way over to Guerrero. Guerrero tries to go through three guys again, can't get it done. Now pass up to Lindblom again. Lindblom centering, great shot and a better save. Christensen clears the puck. Now Brett Christensen looking to make a pass, sends it up to Griffin. Griffin turns it over to Lindblom. Lindblom, that pass is picked off. Now pass up by Taylor Shea over to Lampman. Austin Lampman looking to make a pass, sends it over. Now pass it down the middle. Here comes Christensen. Christensen over to Jason K. Jason K back to Griffin. Over to Christensen. He shoots and that is saved. He took forever to get that shot off and really that should have been just a one-timer. Another look at this. I believe it was the save on Swordief. Yeah. Yeah, that was a great chance. And Kim Whiting again keeping the comments in this one. So face off here with 26 seconds left goes to the Canucks as Dunn picks it up. Vince Dunn now breaking down the wall, sends it up to Nikolishin. Nikolishin is bumped off the puck there by Kasparaitis, and Kasparaitis goes moving up with it. Now Sergei Kasparaitis gets by one guy, pass up the middle is turned over as Yudes couldn't get by his guy. With just 10 seconds left now, there's not much time left, but Again, this game could go either way. We do have overtime if it's not decided in regulation and then a shootout as these playoffs have just gotten crazier and crazier in the CPHA. Anyways, face off, turned over here, Lecision can't get past Hardikainen. Now he walks in, pass over to Hughes, shot saved. Hardikainen is able to clear it. <sighs> so great chances at both ends of the ice in that third period and we are headed to overtime as the Canucks do tie it up. So what a third period it was. The Canucks have really been coming hard at the Comets here, and the Comets managed to stay in it, even though it is forced to sudden death overtime here. So here we go, three on three. The K brothers out against Pedersen and Lafreniere. Hughes and... Denny on the defense. Let's see what happens. And Pedersen wins it. Hughes sends it up to Lafreniere. Lafreniere gets in alone. He's bumped off the puck last second there. Now Denny looking to skate this one up. He's got space. Jimmy Denny skating down the wall. Makes a move but he can't get by. Now Jason K turns it over last second. Now Pedersen bumped off the puck. This battle is going to go to the Canucks as it goes back. Hughes gets the puck up to Pedersen. Now Pedersen breaking out, turns it over to Jason. Jason K over to Charlie. Charlie K back up to Jason K. It's a two on one. Pass in front, centering back. Oh my god, what a save by Torres. Jason K had the game and the series on his stick. And he gets robbed. <sighs> so second unit's out now. Sean to bring it against Zajac and Udes. This should be good. Face off here, it goes back to Denny. Jimmy Denny looking to make a play. Cuts it back to Zajac. Zajac looking to make a pass. He shoots and scores! Weston Zajac sends the Comets to round three of the playoffs, the conference finals, and they will move on. What a shot to beat Quincy Torres, and the Canucks are toppled as the Western Conference champions. Wow, what a series it was. And the Comets will go on to most likely play the Prowlers, but wow. What a series that was. Weston Zajac with the filthy mullet gets it done in game six. My goodness, what a game that was. And that did not take very long in overtime. As soon as we got the second unit out, it was just a crazy sequence there. And Zajac does not miss. Anyways, a couple looks at the greatest chances of the period there and overtime. Zajac's game winner finishes off the Canucks. So your third star of the game is Jimmy Denny with two assists and a plus two game. Your second star is Weston Zajac with the game winner. And your third, or your sorry, your first star of the game is going to go to Kim Whiting. 32 saves out of 34. He was absolutely fantastic again. If anybody's going to win the Smythe, I would be betting on Kim Whiting from our team right now. 
just the way things have gone. So as I guessed, it is confirmed the Comets will take on the Prince Albert Prowlers in round three of the playoffs. The Can- or the uh, Canadians have not won it yet. And do they move on? Oh, you're teasing me now. Come on, let's see. Do the Canadians move on? Yes, they do. So we are not the highest ranked team still. But Montreal and Toronto in the finals there. And then Kelowna and Prince Albert in the West. This is it. This is what it comes down to. And um, let's just take a quick peek at the teams remaining here. So Prince Albert is looking like that. <sighs> LeBanc is really nice. Payer's really nice. They've got a lot of good players on this team. My goodness. Yeah, that's a, that's a really solid forward core. And they have Rich Vernon. I forgot about that. Never mind Parback or Reed Yoshimura. Like there are some there are some top end defenders on this team too. Perez again is a little weak, but that's because Carter Hart is out right now with injury. So that's the team we'll be facing. As far as Montreal and Toronto go, those two teams again are gonna have a battle. Blomstrand, Drysidle, Kotkaniemi, Volpati, even Gabriel Letty. They have got a stacked forward group. The defense isn't bad, but Bouchard is injured currently. Blackwood could be better, um, but Petri Vanninen, very good defenseman as well. As, and so is uh, Jacob Larson there. So yeah, that's Montreal. And then does Toronto still have Jacob Cattler? Well, they've got a good defense either way. Merrick Kopecky... Bellamacchi and Lilligren is kind of the top pairing there that's just insane. Drafted in the same year to literally a pick apart. That probably helps a bit with the chemistry. This team is solid as well. Lots of good players in the forward core. But again, we're just the deepest team besides Montreal in this series. Uh, they've got Samsonov. Or Samsonov, however you want to say it. I don't care at this point. But those are the teams remaining. I think the Comets have a really good chance. The only team I am a little stressed out about still is Montreal. But that's where we're going to wrap it up for this episode. So if you guys have enjoyed watching the Comets make it to the conference finals, as well as put up their best record season so far, make sure you go down below, drop a like on the video. Also, don't forget to leave comments to possibly get featured. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. We're trying to hit 1,300 subs. I know you guys can do that. But anyways, guys, that is going to be it for me. This is Utanio signing out, and see ya.